to the audio version for all of you lovely people out there. So let's get into it. The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. Book review. As soon as The Cabin at the End of the World was available for purchase, I bought it instantly. I never purchased a book so fast in my life. As soon as I started reading Paul Tremblay's new novel, I was immediately hooked. The Cabin at the End of the World, it starts with a seven-year-old girl named Wen and her parents, Andrew and Eric, taking a vacation out to their cabin. Wynn is out catching butterflies when she meets a huge dude named Leonard. He seems to have come out of nowhere. What happens is that the book opens up with Wen just playing out in front of this cabin. And Leonard just shows up out of nowhere and starts hanging out with Wen and just being really friendly. Andrew and Eric, the parents, are out relaxing by the lake while Wen begins to make friends with the stranger. Wen and Leonard sit out, sit out in the front yard collecting grasshoppers. Things turn from nice and sweet and serene to what the fuck pretty quickly. Leonard utters the scariest words that could be said coming from a stranger. None of what is going to happen is your fault. Shortly after this, three people show up with Leonard. They are carrying weapons that could only be used for something brutal in mind. The three new strangers scare us even more by telling Wen that they are going to need to be led into the cabin. What's the reason for this forced entry? To save the world. And this is where it gets, uh, gets pretty crazy. These people show up and Wen, of course, can see that things aren't as they seem. Especially with these scary weapons that the new strangers are holding. The thing with the cabin at the end of the world is that they're so nice all throughout this, as you'll, you'll see when I'm reviewing the book. But I say heroes and villains in my review, but I never, you kind of don't know what to expect because you, you got to, I don't want to spoil anything. As you would have guessed, Andrew and Eric do not let the strangers in without a fight. Things get even weirder when the strangers start to explain what their motive is. The strangers in the cabin at the end of the world explain their reason for being there. In order for the entire world to not end in a doomsday apocalypse, they must sacrifice one of their own. This means between Eric, Andrew, Wen, they have to choose one another, one of them, and sacrifice them, and the sacrifice has to be at their hands as well. This means, like I said, Andrew, Eric, and Wynn need to decide to sacrifice one of each other for the greater good. The sacrifice must also be made by one of their own hands. This is what makes the novel so intriguing. Every time the sacrifice doesn't happen, an event triggers to prove the strangers are not lying. We see, uh, we learn about this from news on the television. So what happens is that every time they, they don't make this sacrifice then someone or they turn on the tv and you know a global event has happened hurricanes or uh just destruction so you don't know who to believe like i said and like i said the thing is is that besides one guy everybody's so nice like things get out of hand a little bit but overall people are nice it, like it, it's it's really intriguing um and the fucked up part is that every time our characters don't make a choice, the cabin gets more messed up. If our heroes don't make a choice, not only do people die all over the world, but one of the strangers has to sacrifice one of their own to hold off the apocalypse for the next cycle. So that's what's crazy too with them telling, hey, you have to do this, is that if they don't choose then one of the strangers has to do a sacrifice from one of the four of them to hold off like the ultimate doomsday for like another cycle, another couple hours. The Cabin at the End of the World was the first novel I've ever pre-ordered in my life, and this is a true statement. I never ordered anything, but I was so excited after reading A Head Full of Ghosts and then Disappearance at Devil's Rock to get this one. Paul Tremblay is just... 
uh, he's one of my favorites. I was not disappointed when I finished this incredible book. I could see this book may, being made into a film uh, like akin to Hush or The Strangers, both awesome movies. Check them out if you haven't yet. The greatest part of The Cabin at the End of the World is that the apocalypse is in the background. Human emotions and decision-making are at the forefront. We see how these impossible decisions affect our characters. Not only our heroes, but the villains as well. Because the entire book is based around decision-making in these crazy, crazy circumstances. But it's not just for... It, it, it's the crazy... It's, it's one of the coolest home invasion... Like, I love when authors take something that's done over and over again and just put this twist on it. Because we have the three heroes or our three characters here struggling with their decisions that they may have to make. But then we have the four villains, if you want to call them that, saying, please, you got to do this. We're not lying. Like, if you don't do this, we're going to have to sacrifice another one of our own. And they're being totally nice about it. And it's just, it's bonkers, but in, a, in the greatest of ways. Um, also, The Cabin at the End of the World is a story that will terrify you, but also pull on your heartstrings. Eric and Andrew and Wynn's love for each other is what makes this novel such a page turner. You get to see how these decisions affect, you know, the human psyche and, and what is going on when people just have this love for each other and they don't know how to make this very, very difficult decision. At the end, I was, I, I was terrified. I laughed. I cried all throughout different parts of this book. All the events that take place add up to one thing. Paul Tremblay is the best horror writer today, and he will be at the top of a bunch of year-end lists, uh, year lists again, including mine. Thank you, everyone, for listening tonight. A little short one for you, a little book review. Um, if you want to follow me on any of the platforms I create on, you can find them at SeftimoreLive.com, where this blog post was written. Uh, Medium, Twitter, Instagram, Mixer, where this is being recorded live. And the podcast are all at Seftimore. So, and the YouTube is Seftimore Live as well. Um, any horror fans out there, anything, share, share this review. Get some... Uh, Let's get some uh, uh, sales for, for Paul Tremblay because he did outstanding work and I want to see him continue to write and continue to just dominate the charts. So thank you everyone for listening.